Okay, yeah, I'm uh, Matthijs Cox. I work at the uh, Radboud University Medical Center in Nijmegen, the Netherlands, uh, at the, uh, as an assistant pro professor at the ICU department, so the intensive care department. Uh, and we have been studying uh, uh, the immunological effects of, uh, of Wim Hof's techniques. Now, he, uh, that's funny because he actually came to us, Wim, uh, with his claim that he could uh, voluntarily influence uh, his autonomic nervous system and thereby also his immune response. Uh, and that was a kind of outlandish claim because uh, both systems, so both the autonomic nervous system and the immune system, are known to be systems that you cannot voluntarily influence. Uh, and at the moment I was doing my PhD uh, and that was about the influence of the autonomic nervous system on the immune response, the interplay between both systems. So it was kind of interesting that Wim came with his uh, claim. Uh, we thought about it a long time if we, uh, if we would go along and uh, test his claim because of course he's a kind of media figure and uh, we were a bit reluctant to see, uh, to, yeah, to end up in a kind of a media circus, but then we started to research him a bit, so uh, look at the internet, what Wim has done in the past, and <coughs> these feats were so remarkable that we thought, okay, let's give him a chance to prove his claim. Uh, and so we ended up uh, doing uh, an initial study in, uh, in Wim Hof himself. The study was carried out in uh, 2000 and, ooh, I have to think back, 10, I think, yeah, 2010. Um, and um, we actually subjected Wim to an endotoxemia experiment and that's something we have been doing for the past 15 years with healthy subjects. It's, um, it's a model, uh, an, a human endotoxemia model, it's a model of systemic inflammation in which we administer a, a dead part of a, of a bacteria to healthy volunteers. So for the study, uh, the subjects were trained uh, by Wim Hof and his team uh, for four days in Poland. So we traveled four days to Poland uh, and uh, also six days in the Netherlands. To, uh, they studied at home or they practiced the techniques at home. So they, they practiced the breathing techniques at home. They, uh, uh, they took cold showers. They did the meditation. Uh, uh, so they did that after the Poland, uh, the four days in Poland, because those were the most intensive days where they really learned and the techniques for the first time and they uh, yeah they hiked up the mountain in Poland they also uh, submerged themselves in ice cold water in the in the waterfall um, and also lied in the snow and st stood in the snow for uh, for quite long periods of time uh, so that, that was basically uh, uh, how the study was carried out so actually so in the end we ended up with 12 uh, we randomized because 19 uh, 18 subjects were trained by Wim Hof uh, and out of those 18, we randomized 12 to, uh, to be ultimately injected with this uh, uh, endotoxin, which I talked about before, because we initially thought, okay, we're going to do 18 subjects in the training, because we might have some dropouts, some, some subjects who did not like the training or could not complete it, it was maybe too uh, difficult for them. But actually, in the end, all 18 subjects were really enthusiastic and all of them completed the, the training, so we just... Uh, yeah, uh, randomly uh, selected uh, 12 uh, subjects to participate in the endotoxemia experiments. And we also had a control group of 12 subjects that also were injected with uh, this endotoxin. And uh, the results were really, really remarkable because we found that um, the trained subjects who were also practicing the breathing techniques during the experiment, uh, during the endotoxemia experiment, they uh, suffered much less symptoms. Um, they had a very large increase and uh, a very rapid and large increase of adrenaline in their blood. And also their levels of inflammatory mediators in the blood were uh, pro-inflammatory mediators were much lower, uh, while, the level, while the levels of anti-inflammatory mediators were much higher. So there was a distinct shift towards an anti-inflammatory uh, effect of, uh, in the trained subjects. And uh, we think that this is due to the rapid and pronounced increase in adrenaline because adrenaline is known to suppress the immune response. It was, however, unknown that you could do something yourself so you can voluntarily uh, practice techniques that increase adrenaline levels to such high concentration. So that, that was really something to such high concentration that it actually influences your immune response um, uh, yourself. So uh, those results are, were remarkable. And we were able to publish them in a, in a, in a top journal, uh, PNAS, so the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences in the United States. Um, and uh, so we think that 
these are not really uh, important findings because they show for the first time that you can uh, voluntarily uh, through relatively easy to learn techniques influence your uh, your own immune system and of course it's early days because this is in a control model uh, of systemic inflammation in healthy uh, volunteers uh, so it needs to be uh, investigated whether these can these results can be translated into uh, to patients with actual uh, uh, conditions and whether it would be beneficial to them as well so that's that's all research uh, in the pipeline at the moment so what we found was the, the, that the subjects who were trained by Wim Hof and practiced the techniques, they had a, a, their inflammatory response was much, uh, was much less than in the previously studied subjects. And in fact, uh, we have used this anatoxemia model for, uh, for many years, for 15 years now in our department. And we've tested all kinds of uh, uh, pharmacological interventions in the model to also attenuate the immune response. But the effects were actually of this technique were much uh, were even stronger than of the pharmaceutical um, uh, uh, intervention that we uh, we uh, studied so far. So the results were really uh, really impressive. So of course the subjects in the study learned all of practiced and learned all three techniques. So the breathing exercises, the cold exposure, and the meditation. We think uh, that the breathing exercises are uh, are mainly involved in the effects that we found. Uh, because those were the techniques that the subjects actually actually carried out on um, on the day of the experiment, on the anatoxemia experiment day, uh, <coughs> and it has been shown before that uh, certain breathing uh, patterns can induce adrenaline release. So that's something that that kind of fits. Uh, but still, we need to uh, uh, we need to investigate this because it would be much easier if if subjects only have to learn one of the techniques. So, for instance, the breathing techniques, and not, uh, for instance, the cold exposure. So we actually have been performing a study in which we uh, have uh, investigated various groups so some uh, of healthy volunteers again so some of them were only trained in the breathing techniques while some of them were also trained in cold exposure or only cold exposure or the combination so we did all kinds of uh, combinations in that study and also subjected those uh, healthy volunteers to the uh, anatoxemia experiments and the results are still uh, um, uh, we still await the final results uh, so that will be very interesting to learn what is the contribution of each of the individual uh, elements to the effects that we observed in the PNAS study. Yes, at the moment uh, there's a group in Amsterdam which we collaborate with as well. Uh, we have done a joint study which is mostly uh, initiated from their end uh, in, uh, in uh, patients with a special form of rheumatoid arthritis. It's called, Be it's called the Bechterev's disease. Uh, and uh, we have done a study uh, to investigate whether the Wim Hof method would be, or the techniques and uh, practice uh, taught by Wim would be of benefit to those patients. And we still await uh, the results. The manuscript is now submitted to a journal, but uh, the results I cannot disclose at this moment. And I do not practice the techniques myself, and that's mainly because, uh, first and foremost, I'm a researcher, I'm a scientific researcher. And I, I, I'm researching this method, so these techniques. So I do not want to become biased. So I want to keep a, a distance to, uh, to the phenomenon that I'm studying. So I want to keep an, oh, yeah, to, to, uh, to be as objective as possible. So therefore, I'm not, uh, I'm not practicing the techniques myself. So uh, no. Uh, no, yeah, they are inspired. They're really interesting in all, interest in all, uh, all the, the research we're doing on this subject. Uh, they are not practicing the techniques themsel themselves, and that's also, I think, because um, they are not ill. They do not have any condition, or they, they, yeah, they're just healthy uh, people, and uh, therefore it's, uh, it's also not, yeah, the, it's not uh, in their interest, probably, to, uh, to practice the techniques while they're, uh, if they're not uh, suffering any inflammatory condition. Uh, or anything uh, because um, and still we need to, to show because it's not yet uh, been uh, investigated yet whether this is actually of benefit to uh, to actual diseases to people with actual con medical conditions so uh, we are all of course researchers here and we are uh, critical we are uh, skeptic about everything and we uh, uh, normally tend not to do things that are not yet proven uh, uh, their benefit so as long as uh, we need we just need more data more studies 
uh, to see whether these techniques are actually uh, beneficial to um, uh, patients with medical conditions. And then it might be that uh, more and more people are going, going to practice them, uh, uh, these techniques uh, for these conditions.